if you're going to be in that country, you can always let us know and we can um, make an appointment for you with a specialist in that country in the U.S. Embassy. Um, one thing you may want to take a look at if you're looking at a new market, we have really good um, market intelligence on our website um, for free. Um, you just have to register on our website. And one of the best things we have is the country commercial guide. That's for almost every country in the world, and it's basically a snapshot of what it's like to do business in that country. Um, what kind of uh, issues there are for U.S. businesses, if there's a certain tax um, that you need to know about, uh, they go over that. It also has hot markets. Um, if there's a really good opportunity for, for certain U.S. products, we, we put that in the report. And they're updated every year by our specialists. So it's a really good source of information. Um, we can also do customized market research. One thing I want to cover is um, any of our trade counseling, um, any of their market research on our website is free of charge. Some of the services I'm going to go over, I'll tell you, um, that I'll tell you about, they do have a fee, and it's basically what we call a cost recovery fee. And it's... Um, Basically, because by law, if, if we're helping one U.S. company and we're not helping your competition, um, we have to charge a, a fee for it. Um, so one of those fee services is customized market research. Say, you really want to do business in Brazil. Um, you hear it's a hot market, but you don't know for sure if your business has potential there. You want to find out who the top players are, et cetera, we can do a report on that for you. This is just an example of one of our um, market research reports um, on industrial equipment and supplies in Baja, California. So. I should say, too, kind of how we work, um, there are people like myself um, who work here domestically and stay, like most of the people in our office have been in our office for 15, 15 years. Um, I'm actually a commercial officer, so I'm here for two years and then I'll go overseas. And so my next post, I'm going to Mexico City. Um, but the people that are, you know, your best friends who really know, um, the market are, are local employees overseas. So, and a lot of times they've worked for us for many years and uh, they really know the local market, they know who the big players are. Um, and those are the people who write all our market research reports. Um, did I go back? Let's see. Okay. Um, Again, background reports, it's basically a, a kind of due diligence report we can do for you. And again, trade data analysis is available. Probably the, the biggest service that is used the most um, is called our gold key service. And that's basically, you come to us, you say, you know, I really want to go, I want to enter the, the Indian market. Um, you saw product potential, you know, you, you, you have a good chance there, but you need a, a local partner, um, either an agent or you need a distributor, et cetera. Um, what we would do is have you fill out what we call a gold key survey, asking about your business, you know, who you want to meet with, who you don't want to meet with, and then our specialist overseas can set up a meeting schedule for you with probably four to six of pre-qualified partners um, for you. And that's our, I would say, our most successful um, and most used service. And it's because, you know, business is face-to-face. -face. Um, we can also provide a list of you for you of pre-qualified partners. Um, and sometimes that's a, a better option, you know, if you already have good connections in that country. But 
the Gold Key Service offers you entry. It offers you the U.S. Embassy advocating on your behalf and saying, hey, this U.S. company is coming to this country and they're interested in, in doing business with you. Um, and then setting up meetings and somebody from the embassy actually goes with you to the meetings. Um, we also do occasional trade missions. Um, we also work very closely with our state partner, Enterprise Florida, who is your state um, agency that does a great job of advocating for Florida companies um, and exporting. We also, again, trade shows both uh, domestic and overseas. We, we uh, bring international buyers to domestic trade shows. We also have um, various opportunities for U.S. businesses at foreign trade shows. And in-country promotions are basically if you're doing a, um, if you want to do some big splash event overseas, we can help you, help you organize it. And commercial diplomacy, um, again, we can advocate for you on any foreign government contracts. So this is my contact information. I put my boss's email as well, Eduardo Torres, because my last day in the office in Fort Lauderdale is April 8th. But we have, um, we have three trade specialists in, in Fort Lauderdale and also also in Miami, um, and we share space in our Miami office with Export-Import Bank and the Small Business Administration, the export lending side of it. So if there's any questions, sure. Uh, my name is Harry Sofferman. I'm a business attorney in Boynton Beach, and one of the uh, most significant issues that I have to deal with on an ongoing basis especially if you're dealing with a manufacturer or a technology company, are uh, export compliance regulations, yeah. um, you know, ITAR and so forth. And my question is, uh, in your presentation when you spoke about uh, providing some guidance on regulations, uh, my, I guess my question is, what is the nature of the kind, the kind of guidance that you provide? Because it's, it's so complicated that when people go to a website, just to kind of get some guidance on the issue, it, it just opens up another can of worms that they're, they're going to have to deal with and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I guess that, that's part of the question, the nature of the guidance. Um, and also, uh, one of the problems that we see just with business in general in terms of exporting is literally where a, a, a company that I work with that's a technology manufacturing company uh, that does military, medical, and so forth, even when we're dealing with friendly countries. We have businesses in those countries saying, you know, I don't even know why we bother dealing with you because it's such a headache. If yeah. you go to England, you know, it'll, this would be so much easier. Yeah. So I guess the other part of the question is whether or not your organization um, communicates those issues uh, with, uh, with members of the government and governmental agencies that, that deal with those types of yeah, I, um, as to your first question, um, we, can, we can't make a determination. Basically, it's Bureau for Industry and Security, which is <clears throat> part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, regulates several items that they're what they call dual use, that there may be, you know, nefarious, they could be used for other reasons, or even if it's, you know, intellectual property that the government wants to know if we're, if we're um, sending it to China, um, we want to know what's going on. And so you have to get a license. Um, we can help you kind of navigate through BIS to, we can't make the determination for the company, but we can give them a good idea of what their product is. We also, uh, a lot of times, we'll refer people to local consultants who do that. And we're actually holding a seminar April 27th through 29th. And we do these every couple of years with people from BIS and from State Department, specifically on, on BIS regulations and ITAR regulations. So we do education, that kind of thing. But we can refer exporters.